weeks ago, my brother and a friend came to uh, Japan to visit me, and since my brother has already been here quite a few times, I thought it was a good opportunity to try somewhere new. So we decided to meet in Kyoto first and spent one full day exploring the city. And from the next day, we rented a car and started a four days road trip. We stayed within the Kyoto prefecture, but since it's pretty large, we really focused on going to the countryside, going more closer to the nature. We were lucky with the weather too, and we could see plenty of fall season color. I brought with me only one camera and one prime lens. It was the Sony A7 IV paired with the Samyang 35mm f2.8. The previous video on the channel was dedicated to this setup and how it became my kind of everyday carry. And yeah, we spent our first night in a very nice cottage lost in the middle of the forest, so it was a very nice way to kickstart that road trip. myself that I need different lenses to capture everything I want. Those solo trips where the focus is really on covering a lot of ground and spend the most amount of time shooting photos and videos are quite rare in the end so I guess it is normal for me to want to maximize the versatility of my camera setup but all it does is creating more friction and what it truly is is an unhealthy and unproductive feeling of FOMO. Every day of the trip I wake up trying to decide what lens to shoot with, also considering to bring two lenses with me and swap when the occasion presents itself. A lot of willpower and decision making energy is just wasted even before starting to shoot. On the other side, when I travel with friends, family or my wife, the photography is not really the priority and I tend to bring just one camera and one lens with me. There is something so liberating about not having to negotiate with yourself about what is the best piece of gear to bring for that day. You only have one option available so you can keep all your energy and creativity for what truly matters, taking the shot. It seems like I'm a slow learner on that topic, or at least that I'm always scared to apply the same strategy on solo trip, more oriented around photography and making videos. The ratio of photos I'm happy with to the amount of shot taken when I only traveled with one camera and one lens is significantly better than when I have everything with me. I have no photography trip planned in the foreseeable future but I will definitely force myself to bring the simplest camera setup next time I'm traveling around just by myself. not take a lot of photos on that second day of the road trip or at least photos that were worth uh, showing in this video. I was the only one driving because you need an official translation of your driving license in Japan to uh, to drive so I couldn't take photos and video of the journey, the landscape from the car and everything but if you are a passenger I would really suggest you to do so because I always love having these kind of photos or footage when uh, creating an album or when doing a YouTube video. I think they are very valuable and important and they really help to create a whole story so if you can do it just do it we visited that nice remote village with old traditional houses and then since we were staying at the Ryokan that night we decided to check in quite early which I would really suggest you to do so because you really want to enjoy the full experience going into the hot bath and then enjoy the nice dinner which depending on where you stay can be quite early so you don't want to arrive too late and just miss dinner I guess <laughs>
good night of sleep at the Ryokan. We visited an absolutely beautiful shrine. It was very large, plenty of things to visit in the middle of the nature, just like a lake. And it was funny because when we were there, I was switching between my big camera and my iPhone to uh, capture like photos and videos and uh, things for my Instagram stories and all that. And the thing you have to know is that both my brother and our friend are really not into photography or videography. So sometimes when you're traveling with such people, it's a bit difficult to, uh, to compromise and not be that friend that just slow down everything and take too many pictures but when we were there and they saw how good looking videos I could take with just my iPhone they wanted to uh, uh, try to do the same so I taught them a few things and then they spent the whole time trying uh, experimenting with uh, what I just told them so it gave me much more time to also uh, take more pictures and more videos which uh, was really nice so I guess it's good to uh, whenever you can also involve your friend um, into the photography or videography process and who knows maybe it can uh, spark something in them and after that we drove a little bit more to go to a village called Ine and it's uh, by the sea so you have a lot of houses by the water with direct access to their boat so it is a pretty special place and very photogenic uh, spot I think. trip follow the same principle. I always do a lot of research on Google Map, trying to find interesting looking shrine, um, nature spot or traditional villages. And then with a car you have all the freedom you want to uh, stop wherever you want and have a look by yourself. So if you have the opportunity to drive a car when you come to Japan, I would strongly suggest you to do so because you will have a much more interesting experience than just going to the big cities in my opinion. Just like that last spot we've been on the last day, it was full of autumn colors and after that we've headed back to uh, Kyoto to return the car.
thanks a lot for watching as always all the photos and videos i've been edited with my lightroom presets and my lots so if you're interested go check out my website and i hope to see you in the next one bye